Hello everyone, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome to a artificial intelligence tutorial. This is the first tutorial of the series, the last video. We just discussed an introduction to the series, talk about what we will discuss and go through the topics. So I mentioned in the last video that the very first tutorial, a few tutorials will be covering movement behavior, like seeking fleeing, wandering, uh, stuff like that. Avoid obstacle avoidance, uh, those type of things. So just movement behaviors. So this tutorial is, this artificial intelligence concept is rather simple. Uh, I thought I would start off with something really simple. So this one is covering seeking. And the idea between seeking, the idea with seeking is that it just directs a object towards another object. So in this case, it's a gameplay object. So it's directing a source gameplay object to a target gameplay object. So it's directing it by rotating it, so it's facing it, and then pushing it using a uh, vector. So it can move along the vector to reach the target. So the whole idea is to we have to set it to what do we want as source, who, who's going to be moving along this seeking path, and what's the target? Who are we moving towards? So we pass that to the artificial intelligence seek method you see here. And I mentioned in the last video that I'm using X and A and C sharp. I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes. There will also be a, a pseudocode in the download. So you just download the zip file that contains this code, but it will contain the pseudocode. So that way, if you're using C++ and other game frameworks or uh, Python and Pygame or whatever, you can easily convert it from one to the other without doing much difficult things. So anyway, using XNA and C Sharp, you can use a built-in Vector2 from the XNA framework. And... Uh, it just creates a 2D vector that holds an X position and a Y position. And you have a gameplay object that has positions, rotations, ve velocity, acceleration. All the standard stuff that a gameplay object would have, we pass it into the seek method. So the, we need to calculate a vector between the source and the target. So we simply subtract the target's position from the source's position. And that's a built-in function in Vector2 as well that says subtract. Uh, you can just do target.position.x minus source.position.x, comma target.position.y minus source.position.y, and it will do the exact same thing. So if you do not have the dot subtract method in your... API or program language of choice, you can just do it this way. Just take the target.position.x minus source.position.x and do it the long way. Then you that creates one giant vector that essentially is a from the target to the source. So now we need to normalize that so it has a length of 1. So to normalize it, you just take the vector source to target divided by the length, which is a, a mathematical uh, formula. There's a vectors tutorial that I created a long time ago. It's a mathematics vectors tutorial, so I'll link that in the, the description as well as the uh, forum posting. So take a look at the vectors, mathematical vectors tutorial, and you'll know how to normalize the vector. You just take the vector divided by its length, and find its length will be in the tutorial. I don't want to bore everybody with mathematics in this tutorial. So you just normalize the vector, and then you need to multiply it by the speed, the speed you want the object to travel, the source object to travel. And again, that's built into the gameplay object, which is its speed. It has, it knows its own speed. It knows its maximum speed. 
So we just multiply the vector by its speed and we already get the movement vector, which we'll call the velocity. So the vector that we calculated will be stored as a velocity, which means it will travel towards the target. Now we need to handle the rotation. We want to position it to where it's facing our target object. So there's an ATAN2, I think, in every single API or programming language. I think you, if you're using C++, you need to pound include math or something like that, but you should be able to get ATAN2. Now, it might not be similar to this, but you simply pass it the what you want it to uh, calculate. You need to pass it the Y and the X, and it will calculate the... Uh, rotation value, the uh, the angle between those two, the uh, y and the x. So the angle that the vector is oriented is calculated based on ATAN2. So once we get all that information going, the velocity and the rotation, then we can actually move our enemy using a update. And it just increases the position based on the velocity so position plus equals velocity and then it uses a rotation and uh, sets that rotation up and then we draw it and then that's it so if we run the game you'll see the enemy down here at the bottom right is moving towards the player which is just moving left to right it'll bounce off the wall and move back so this the seeking behavior it is a act of moving a source target a source gameplay object to a target gameplay object so this is one of the easiest artificial intelligence concepts to grasp is that it's essentially what we did in the space order tutorial if you remember the space order game or the space order tutorial that looks exactly how the enemy would operate Except we added the additional, it will shoot you every couple of seconds. So, moving along a path towards a target player. And it keeps on changing its rotation and keeps on moving towards it. Is a artificial intelligence concept. I just throw the enemy in the world and I need to, like I said in the first video you will eventually need to tell it what to do but the whole idea of the artificial intelligence is that i just call seek and it takes over from there so next tutorial will be a really interesting artificial concept and you'll, i think you'll really enjoy it is a fleeing which is when an object gets too close it will turn around and it will flee the opposite direction it's a pretty cool technique, I might say myself. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.